Remember I said we're made, can you still hear me? Yeah, we're made out of information. Now his, his genetic information we're made out of. But then, and that's what we can see, and it's pushing us through time. And then there's other information we're made out of, and that's our autobiographical history. We have the memory of what actually happened. And if those genetic needs are met, we're going to feel good. If they're not met, we're going to feel frustration and pain. Okay? So, here I want to link. No, well, I'll go a little bit further. I need to link. Do you follow that? So, there's two sets of information that's pushing us the genetic and the autobiographical. So, to help you remember it, I call it genetic storage. And I call the autobiographical history, or storage, history. And we are going to see the world through the lens. Our present consciousness is made out of memory. The words I like to use are our present consciousness is a tapestry. You know what a tapestry is? <coughs> okay, you know, a tapestry. And it's woven of threads of memory. So what we call present consciousness is absolutely driven by memory. We used to call that the old map. But now it's more than the old map. It's the way we see the world and the way we react to the world. It's based on um, the history, the old biographical history. And if those needs have not been met, the genetic needs were pushed. Those are the passions. And we have an autobiographical history of not being met, guess what happens? Those needs which have to be met at the right age with the right kinship relationship try to get met at the wrong age with the wrong kinship relationship. And that's called marriage. <laughs> Back in 
because the people want the stuff now, but we have to give it at the right age. Or in other forms of therapy, if the needs aren't met, we're taught to cope with it, get over it, and here, let me show you how to get over it and forget about it. We don't do that. We make a new memory and plan it, hopefully, in the long-term memory, because then we're going to change how people perceive the world. Because we're going to see the world through the lens of memory. So I want to highlight here, we're not going to make changes by making things come out. That's catharsis. Of course, it comes out of this work. But the change comes from getting the new memory in from the right kinship relationship at the right age. So you have to know how to do a ritual so the person is not getting it in the relationship in the present with the therapist or in the potential. It's done with the role play figure who our genes can recognize should have been there. That's the important part. So be careful that we don't overemphasize the getting out of stuff as to getting in stuff. And how do we do that? Here's the way we do that. We start in the absolute presence. So now we've got in the absolute presence, the client is in this possibility sphere. They don't know it, but that's what we're projecting on it. And we're in a platform of the here and now. Okay? We're in reality. So there's a stage now. I'm showing you there's a possibility sphere. And that, that possibility sphere is on the stage of the here and now. And I, as the therapist, am going to support the believability of what's going to happen in that new memory. But I'm not going to be the supplier. So that means I don't go into that possibility sphere. The antidote, ideal figure, so the healing is not going to be done with your personality. The healing is going to be, your personality is going to support the believability. Now, we said that present consciousness is a tapestry woven of threads of memory. So, the very first thing we're going to do is take apart present consciousness. And what is consciousness made out of? Perception. And we see, and the instant we see, we get a motor response, right? And the moment we get a motor response, as uh, uh, William James says, then you get affect. Affect always comes from a body reaction. And then we get thought. So now we're going to take apart present consciousness knowing it's made out of memory. So we then do micro-tracking. I mean, you all know micro-tracking, you think? Yeah, you know, <laughs> micro yeah, you know. And micro-tracking now, we make two hypothetical figures. <clears throat> one to follow the affect in the client and one to follow the thought. So when the client is in the here and now, and they have this, they're talking, and they're, as they're talking, they'll say, oh, this is the anniversary of my mother's death, and, and their face shows it. So the, the process of micro-tracking is to say, if a witness was here, the witness would say, I see how much and what would be on their face? What were grief, heartbreak? Okay. And it's important to make the right word because that's like a shape, counter shape. The word gives a shape, counter shape, and an acknowledgement of the feeling. So when you might retract accurately, as he has, but that's not enough. I see a grief you feel. It's what's the context? So the, the therapist has to remember word for word how much grief of you when you remember the death of your mother. And the person says, yes. And what are we doing in that moment? We're putting in there 